Hey all, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys some helpful advice that I actually followed in order to get my job as a software engineer without a four-year college degree. So growing up in the 90s, there was this heavy push for anyone that wanted to be a skilled labor to go to college and to get an actual college degree. While I don't disagree that at the time this might have seemed like it was necessary and it might have very well been necessary, I believe the pendulum of public opinion is slowly starting to sway the other way where people are starting to question whether college degrees or going to college is actually, you know, getting a decent education and not really just getting a piece of paper. As software engineering becomes much more of a coveted job, we're realizing that people in the actual workforce may not be as traditionally educated as we might have thought they would be. We're realizing that people that come from the actual traditional backgrounds, whether it's four-year college degrees, masters, PhDs, might not be that much farther ahead or ahead at all in terms of you know traditionally educated engineers or non-traditionally self-starter self-taught developers for example i started my professional career as a day laborer slash mason slash carpenter and i was also a part-time bartender at the time and being in the restaurant industry and being a laborer i was surrounded by people that we're going to college part-time or full-time and just kind of making it work, but they weren't necessarily happy with what their degree was going to be in, and they weren't necessarily sure of how to actually use their degree that they were studying for in the workforce or to get a job that they could feel valued in. Now, in these jobs, I was around a lot of different people who were trying to get their degrees in whether it was general business, general education, communications, or something, you know, one of those broad degrees that you think can go into many different fields. Now, while I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea, I also don't really covet the idea of wanting to go to college just to go to college. I think you should go to college if you have a reason to do it, whether you're trying to become a computer scientist or you're trying to become a teacher. But if you don't really know what you're gonna be doing in college and you wanna go the self-taught developer route or the self-taught route in general, I think it's really valuable to kind of figure out who you are before you try to figure out what you're gonna be doing for the rest of your life. Now, nothing against people that are actually taking the traditional route. I plan on probably going back for a computer science master's when I'm a little bit older and I can kind of get, you know, maybe a company to pay for it. But I really don't see the point in going into debt for the hell of it. Now, if you want the college experience, I totally understand that. If you're a person that kind of learns better in groups or you want to have new ideas shared around you and make new friends and you have the opportunity to do that, by all means do that. It could be worth your while. But I don't really see the benefit of just going to college just to go to college. You know, if, if you have a specialization or a skill or a skill set that you're looking to master or hone and college can facilitate that, definitely go down that route. But if you don't, take some time to yourself, in my opinion, and think about what you really wanna do. But if you're like me and you got into software engineering or you want to get into software engineering later in your life, I got into it when I was about 21 years old, so not that late, but definitely past the college prime years, Google is free. So if you want to actually become a software engineer or you wanna see if you want to go down this route, do some Googling, see if there's something about it that really piques your interest and really be a free thinker about what your future should actually be as a software engineer or as a technologist in general. This isn't just for engineers, but it's gonna be kind of pointed towards that route. Now to answer the question that is in the title of this video and what you guys are all, what you guys all might be wondering, which I've kind of pointed to already, the answer is no, you don't need a degree if you wanna become a software engineer, but let me add the caveat that it actually does help. And let me tell you why. Now, let me explain. As a self-taught engineer, as someone who tried to break into the professional space, I can admit to you right now that I probably got a bit lucky in terms of getting my first job. It is admittedly pretty hard to actually break into the professional space if you don't have a college degree. Firstly, because you have to actually prove to your employer that you're gonna be a worthy employee, that you know somewhat something about computer science or software engineering. And without a degree, it's, it's pretty hard to actually convince employers of this, but it's not impossible. And there's gonna be three different ways that I really suggest that you guys go down or three separate tips that you guys should try to enable in your own lives that are gonna help your chances of actually becoming a self-taught developer that then goes into the professional world and gets a career out of it. Now, for the sake of a CV filter or something like that, that's where a degree would come in. But again, these three tips are really gonna help you try to bypass that. And the first one is gonna be that you need actual projects on your GitHub. The first thing that I can recommend to you is if you're actually going to a job that is looking for say a Python developer, you should probably have one or two well-documented projects on your GitHub, whether it has a nice readme or build steps or anything like that, 
that you can run an employer through and show some sort of a demo that when you actually get your interview, you can explain, you know, I'm not traditionally educated, but here's a few of my projects that you can look up on my actual code. You can see that I'm following best practices with things like PEP8, I'm doing functional programming, I'm using, you know, Django as a framework, things like that. You wanna build out an actual project that's gonna be in your portfolio, whether it's a portfolio website, which is very, very helpful, or just projects in general that you can pin to your actual GitHub so you can show that you actually know the actual code base that they're gonna be trying to implement when you work for them professionally. So for tip number two, you wanna actually look at certifications that you can help kind of upskill your resume. So number one, you're gonna have GitHub as your primary resume builder, so to speak. So usually people have a college degree that kind of gets them in the door. What you wanna do is you wanna have a GitHub that's pretty popular, that has different Python libraries or JavaScript libraries, depending on what kind of job you're going for. And then number two, you wanna to try to get in, uh, you know, any sort of certification that's gonna help you get your foot in the door or pass that CV filter. Things that I recommend if you're going into full stack development, a lot of companies want to have some sort of cloud experience, whether it's GCP, Azure, AWS. I would personally pick AWS just because it's the one that I've seen the most, but I definitely don't discount Azure or GCP. So go in there, look at certifications. I'll leave a card up below or up top where I have a list of different certifications that you can get, but it really shows that you can diversify your actual portfolio of technology and you can use a cloud provider of some sort. On a lot of teams, there's gonna be people who specialize in different things. For example, someone might be really good at front end, someone might be really good at GraphQL, someone might be really good at back end. You could try to be the person that's, you know, very good at front end and AWS, or very good at back end and AWS, or very good at AWS infrastructure as code. Really try to find your niche role and then expand from there. It's really good to be specialized at one thing and then slowly pick up other things as you go because it can kind of help you keep your foot in the door and you can also learn from a team of really, really smart engineers that can help you progress in your career. But instead of actually just stopping there and just getting your certification, I highly recommend that you actually take the technology you might have learned from that certification, whether it's the AWS Cloud Practitioner or the AWS Developer Associate, and actually add that to your GitHub portfolio. For example, if you're creating some sort of Python project with Django as a framework and React as a front end, add some serverless in there and put everything on a serverless Lambda using the serverless framework, or use AWS CDK for infrastructure as code. Really take the uh, technical aspects that you're learning from these certifications and try to implement them in your actual GitHub projects, because that is again gonna be your resume, so to speak. You really wanna have not only a portfolio website, but you also wanna have a really presentable GitHub that's gonna help you actually show off some of the skills that you're learning, whether it's via your own studies or the certifications that you could be taking on the side. Lastly, I really recommend that you guys start to create content. I know that this is gonna be a bit tough because creating content is pretty tough, right? But it's no secret that I actually just got my job as a lead engineer for a company because of my YouTube channel. It's not because I have this giant YouTube channel that has tons and tons of subscribers and puts out content every week because Lord knows I'm super lazy when it comes to content in the past couple of weeks, but just the ability to articulate yourself show that you love technology and software engineering or software and actually create content around the things that you enjoy it really not only helps your soft skills such as communication but it helps other people get in touch with you you kind of put out your opinions to the world and if the world kind of accepts those opinions things can come back full scale right so i got my last job because someone saw me in a video, thought I would be perfect for the role that was coming up, reached out to me and it turned out great. I love the team I'm on, I love the work I'm doing. So create content, whether it's you're doing YouTube videos, which I know is not gonna be for everyone because you have to sit here and talk to a camera like I'm doing right now, and trust me, it's pretty tough, but create blogs, create, I mean, even if it's as simple as your opinions on Twitter, create content that you can put out into the world to give yourself a brand of some sort. Now, don't make a brand just for brand's sake, but if you really value the technology that you're you know, writing, that you're creating, that you're learning, tell other people about it. Creating content is the most undervalued skill that I think people just don't take advantage of. And it also helps you build up those soft skills such as communication, public speaking, and other things that developers might not really foresee as critical skills to their actual engineering prowess. But I can promise you as someone that's trying to lead their own team right now and do a lot of technical work on the back end, having the ability to communicate with other people as well as your public speaking ability is really, really helpful. And also it's just pretty fun to get better at something that you might not be that great at. So create some content, build a brand around yourself, and I promise that you will stand out a lot more. 
than other people that are not creating content and just trying to focus on the work only. Also, this might not have been obvious with the other stuff that I was saying, but creating content could also be creating your own por portfolio website. You can really showcase your unique style and the software that you want to write. I really think that writing software is an extension of your personality. And I do take a lot of pride in the software that I write because I feel like it's, you know, it's mine. I, I own it. So I want to make it the best that I can, the most optimized that I can. I want to get the most feedback on the software that I can. So if you're creating software, you kind of put your own personal stamp into everything that you're creating. And that could really entice employers and, and show a lot of, you know, forethought in your own career that you're kind of here to stay. You're not someone that's coming into software engineering for a cash grab or anything like that. You're coming in because you love creating beautiful software, compliant software, and you want to continue to get better at that craft. It's a craft that you'll have to work on for the rest of your life, but it's, you know, the journey is just as beautiful as writing the software itself. The main point here is if you're going down the quote unquote non-traditional career path, your GitHub is really going to be the key to your resume. Now a portfolio is going to help support that, but GitHub is essentially social networking for engineers where other engineers or team leads or managers can come in and read your code and see directly that you can do what you say you can do and that you have the skills to make a great teammate on their actual team. So treat your GitHub like it's a personal resume on top of your resume. Definitely link your GitHub in your resume. I don't see any issue with doing that. And if you do create content, whether it's streaming on Twitch or YouTube or creating YouTube videos or blogs, definitely link that in your resume below um, or in your resume in general, because it really shows that you are putting in the extra mile in order to progress in your career and progress in something that you may have a passion for. And it can't be understated that when you're coming into a career such as software engineering, you not only have to be a decent human being because you're going to have to work with a team, but you also have to realize that this isn't a job that you kind of get good at and you set and forget it. You're going to constantly be having to update your skill set, learn new technologies, write software on the side. Now, I'm not saying you can't get away with not dedicating your entire life to writing software. It's not at all what I'm saying. But a lot of this is predicated on you having a passion for actually writing software. And, you know, I'm not going to say that you shouldn't be in this career if that's not what you like to do, because you definitely should. And tons of people are successful. But if you can't see yourself sitting down on a Saturday to learn new technology or staying a little bit after work to learn new technology, I don't know if this is going to be the career for you because there's going to be a lot of that going on, especially as a self-taught developer. We don't have the opportunity to have that degree to fall back on. So we constantly have to teach ourselves new skills. And I might just have a little bit of imposter syndrome on this, but I really think it's the correct way to go that you're constantly sharpening your skills on the weekends or at night or talking to other people that may have a different opinion in the, than you. So you can actually get take a good take on your code and, and you know what's wrong with it, what, what could be done better you're going to constantly be having to try to improve the code that you're writing, the skills that you have, even if it's soft skills. So if that's something that kind of freaks you out. I would definitely, you know, think wisely about if this is going to be the career for you. So writing software can really be a beautiful art or it can be a giant headache, depending on what you want to do for work, what your kind of personality is and where you see yourself going in your professional career. If you implement the three or so tips that I outlined above and above all else, you write a bit of code every day for the next year or so again, that part can't really be left out. I promise you that the actual progress that you're making now is definitely going to pay off and you will have a good path to becoming a professional software engineer, but it really is going to take that hard work. Anyone like me can give you all the tips in the world, but if you're not sitting down every day and intentionally writing code for 30 minutes to an hour for a year or so, all of the tips and all of the videos that you can watch aren't really going to resonate with you because you're not actually putting in the work and it's not just going to, you're not going to have that aha moment where everything clicks and then suddenly you're a software engineer and your life changes. So if you really want to put in the work, this can be a beautiful career for you, but it's really all up to you. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment down below if you have any questions. Join in the Discord if you want to ask me any sort of question that's more long form or you want to post any of your code that needs review. There's tons of people in there that will actually review your code and help you with syntax or optimization or anything like that. Definitely follow me on my socials in the description below and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.